welcome back to my channel. I'm Angela, for those of you who don't know me. I'm a second year investment banking analyst working in New York City, and I do career videos and travel videos here on YouTube. Today, I'm going to be covering a very important question that a lot of people have been asking me. How much are you paid as an investment banker? Before I get into it, if you could just hit the subscribe button and the like button for this video so that I could keep making more, please do. So, I'm not going to beat around the bush. Let's just get straight into my compensation. So, I work at a bulge bracket bank in New York City and I'm in my second year of investment banking. When I first joined, my base compensation was $85,000. Now that's pretty much unanimous across the street. Most bulge bracket banks pay $85,000 base for their first year analysts. Investment banking salaries are composed of a base salary as well as a bonus. Now the bonus varies from firm to firm, but generally for bulge bracket banks, your bonus will be about 70% to 100% of your base salary, depending on one, your performance, and two, how well your group and how well the bank did that year. So the way your bonus is decided is that there are end of the year reviews, and in the end, they're going to rank you amongst all of the other analysts within your class, or just all of the analysts within the bank overall. And what they'll do is that they'll gather all of the reviews from you and then you'll be ranked. And then you'll be segregated into different buckets. Again, what kind of bucket you're in and how much money each bucket is paid varies, but that is essentially how your bonus is determined. So being in my second year of investment banking, I did get a slight pay raise and that's common from year to year simply because I was promoted from a first year analyst to a second year analyst. The way it works is that you are an analyst for three years before you become an associate for another three years and then a director for another three years and then after that you are an executive director. This naming varies from firm to firm, but that's pretty much usually how the role works. When you're an executive director, the next role after that is managing director. And for executive directors, their timing isn't segregated to just three years, like all of the other roles previously have been. That depends on their performance and how many clients they can bring in. And oftentimes for more senior positions, that's how their bonus is determined by the number of deals that they're closing. However, when you're a more junior person like myself, your bonus is determined by the bucket that you're in and that's determined by people's review of you and how they think you've worked across the entire year. So now that I've covered my compensation, I want to go into how that's spent. So for me, that money goes into three main buckets. One, my 401k, two, my bank savings, and three, my expenses. So firstly, I'm just going to quickly go over what an investment banker's expenses will generally look like. So I stay in Manhattan and I live in the master bedroom out of a two bedroom apartment and my rent per month was about $1,800. Beyond that, there's also food expenses. So at my firm and for most investment banks, they will offer nightly dinners from Seamless. So there will be a, either a $25 or $30 cap for you to order din dinner from Seamless and the firm will pay for that. And that's for maybe 7 p.m. or beyond if you're staying. So usually on weekdays, my dinner will be covered by my firm. And to try and save money, and because there was so much food that I could order with $25, I would usually save half of that for lunch the next day and just heat it up. So usually during the weekdays, my expenses for meals were almost zero. That's unless I didn't have food saved over for lunch the next day where I would go out and buy a meal and that would usually be around $10. In terms of weekends, I usually eat out. I know eating out isn't really the best way 
to save money. Eating out is really expensive, especially at restaurants in New York. But for me, eating out and food is a passion of mine. If you want to check out my food Instagram, it's Sunny Eats. And that's where I post all the food videos and restaurants that I visit. I'm a huge foodie, so as a result, I'll usually try and eat out on a Friday night if I get out of work in time or on a Saturday night. In addition to that, groceries, I don't buy too many groceries. I'll maybe do one grocery run every month just to buy things like juices and things that don't easily go bad. And so my monthly expenses for food will generally be about $400 or so. I would say I spend about $100 on food every week and that's mostly coming out of my weekend expenses. Aside from that, I also have other expenses like transportation. So the way I get to work is usually by subway in the morning and when I go back at night, I'll generally take an Uber. Again, most investment banks have a policy where if you stay past a certain time, they will expense your Uber ride home. So I'll generally take an Uber or a Lyft or a taxi to get back home and so I save money on that. And so my transportation expenses aren't very high. It's just for the subway and usually on the weekends if I need to go anywhere, I'll again take the subway. If you need to go into the office on the weekend, it's also expensed by the company. And just in terms of shopping and other personal needs, I'd say I don't really shop that much. I don't have too much time to just go shopping in person, but I will online shop from time to time. I might need to refill on my skincare or buy some new work clothes or things like that. So I put my monthly expenses for shopping on average at about $50 to $100 or so. Not more than that because there are months where I just don't buy anything. So all the rest of the money that I have goes into both my 401k as well as my bank savings account. Honestly, my biggest expense from month to month is my rent. But in general, that's how much investment bankers are paid. It's pretty much standard for most firms, especially for bulge brackets in New York City. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any other questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Next, please like this video if you enjoyed it and found it helpful. Subscribe for more videos like this and hit that bell to turn on the notifications so you know whenever I post a new video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Thank you.